Today I'm very excited to start Avatar Season 2. A quick note though on the format of these videos, some people have pointed out that the videos are kind of rushed, and there are a couple reasons for that. One is copyright, of course, but also part of it is me. I'm kind of reluctant to post really long YouTube videos, and also there are just so many great moments in the show. If I were to include all of them, these YouTube videos would span like 45 minutes, and that's just not possible. The solution to that going forward is to do one episode per video. That will give me a little more time to breathe, and yeah, hopefully we can feature each episode a little more. But uh, yeah, let's get into season two. I'm excited to see what it has in store. 100 years passed, and my brother and I discovered the new avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are quite impressive, he is good at things and- Damn it. Book two, Earth. have another dream. There's the water spirit. <gasps> Typically these things are a sign of danger or struggle coming. It was scary. I was scary. He did completely mess up a lot of the Fire Nation people. It does seem like he's getting a little bit more in control of it each time, but yeah, obviously still a big unknown. Katara, this amulet contains water from the spirit oasis. Aang, these scrolls will help you master waterbending. Sokka, take care, son. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I really didn't like this guy at first, but it's nice that there's some resolution to his character, kind of. He came around and ended up being a good mentor figure for two of them. <laughs> I lost it all. I want my father not to think I'm worthless. Why would he banish you if he didn't care? That is a good point, and we haven't seen a whole lot of Fire Lord Ozai yet. But yeah, my first reaction when I saw that scene where Zuko got his scar, he's just raising his son in, in the best way he knows how, which to us is obviously way overboard and sad for Zuko. So that'll be interesting to see going forward. Oh, is this Ozai? Oh no, it's the sister? First glimpse. My brother and my uncle have disgraced the Fire Lord. I'm afraid the tides will not allow us to bring the ship into port. Do the tides command this ship? I'm Oops. afraid I don't understand. Maybe you should worry less about the tides who've already made up their mind about killing you and worry more about me who's still mulling it over. I guess there's a parallel there between Zuko and the sister. They both have been shown to mistreat crewmen, although Zuko has revealed that he does actually care despite his exterior. It seems like just part of their upbringing, which is not surprising. But we'll see if that actually is the way she is. I don't know anything about her character yet, but one thing you can say about her is that she probably is similar to Zuko in a lot of ways, and the way they probably differ is that she hasn't experienced the exile, which is a defining thing for Zuko. In the season one finale, I talked a little bit about how Zuko used his weaknesses, in this case his past trauma, to give him strength. He said out loud that it was his hardship that made him strong, and you can definitely see that. When we see him in the flashback before the council meeting where he interrupted the, the commander or whatever, he is kind of naive, and then when he's cast out, he loses his innocence. But in a way, the sister still has that innocence. It'll be really fun to see what happens now that she's out on the world. In a way, now, she is where Zuko was when we started. She's on the ship, looking for the Avatar. Unaware, kind of, of the hardship she's most likely going to experience. I am General Fong, and welcome to all of you, great heroes. Appa, Momo, Grey Sokka. The mighty Katara. Katara is getting a huge upgrade over the last couple of episodes. She went from like, I can barely move water to being waterbending champion of the world. We were all amazed at the stories of how you single-handedly wiped out an entire fire navy fleet at the North Pole. The more I watch the show, the more I'm enjoying the design of the different nations' habitat or environment. You're ready to face the Fire Lord now. What? No, I'm not. Aang still needs to master all four no, elements. Not. I'll help you figure out how to get into the Avatar state. And then you'll face your destiny. No, this dude's getting way ahead of himself. Yeah. We already have a plan. May I show you something? Guilt trip incoming. That's the infirmary. Yeah. People are dying, Aang. There's something extra cowardly about what this guy's doing. Something just feels really weak and pathetic about it. Oh, we get the lightning again. Almost perfect. Almost isn't good enough. It's nice how little moments like that are so effective at developing power, because the only time we've seen the lightning that I can remember, we saw Uncle Iroh channel it, and she seems to be able to command it. I'm in. I'll fight the Fire Lord. Aang, no! There's a right way to do this. Practice, study, and discipline. I'm just being realistic! Now I will join the four elements into one! They're really going all out Water, here. Earth, fire! This is just mud! As far as I can remember, most of the times he went in the Avatar state were protecting people around him. I'm guessing that's part of it. Hello, brother. Oh. Uncle. 
How do you become uncivilized so soon, Zuzu? Don't call me that! <laughs> Zuzu. That's cute. Father regrets your banishment. He wants you home. If you're Zuko, how do you feel about that? You should be happy, excited, grateful. There's clearly something else going on internally for Zuko. In certain ways, he's changed and there's no going back. He wants me back? I'm not saying the Avatar state doesn't have incredible and helpful power. Watching you be in that much rage and pain is really scary. I'm really glad you told me that. But I still need to do this. Defeating the Fire Lord is the only way to stop this war. Watching this whole thing play out with him and the Earth Nation leader dude, it just strikes me as wrong and I can't quite put my finger on why it is. I don't know how to explain this any other way except for personal experience, but what I found is even if what I want to do is somehow obviously impractical, the act of following my instincts is almost always more rewarding and more useful long term than listening to the advice of others that feels wrong to me, no matter how practical it is on the surface. And I think part of that is about our instinct for what is meaningful. We all have weaknesses or blind spots or things that we need to work on to grow. When there's something lacking, your mind unconsciously navigates yourself towards it. And it may not always be obvious what that thing is until much later, but sometimes following that the progression means taking a huge risk that doesn't seem practical on the surface. And I feel like what Aang is doing right now is the opposite of that. He's listening to practical advice for winning the war, but it's disconnected from who he is as a person and where he is on his, de on his path to development. In many ways on this path, he's underdeveloped, and I don't just mean his power, I also mean his mental development, his spiritual development, his reasoning behind it. He is called towards going to masters and training, and that's for a reason, it's because that's what he needs. He senses, and I think Katara also correctly senses, the best path long term is listening to that calling rather than just what is immediately obvious or what most people would do in the situation. The whole thing has just an air of dishonesty to it. Some of the moments in my life where I experienced the most growth were when I made a mistake, but the mistake was something that I needed to make. It was something that my heart told me to do. It wasn't accidental. It was a calling. And interestingly, I found that when I do follow the advice and do just what I'm pressured into doing or people tell me to do, it always ends in disaster. It's never what people think it will be. I've kind of developed the philosophy over time. I'd rather make my own mistakes than someone else's mistakes. And I think that right now Aang is on the verge of making someone else's mistake. He's been kind of guilted into this. We're going home after three long years. There you go, there's some excitement. Father's realized how important family is to him. He cares about me. I care about you. And if Ozai want you back, I think it may not be for the reasons you imagine. Uncle Iroh's never wrong. There it is. You don't know anything. It's scary to look at that, right? What if he's right? It's terrifying. It's easier just to shut people down when what they say is not convenient to what you want to believe. I think you are exactly what you seem. A lazy, mistrustful, shallow old man who's always been jealous of his brother. That is just... The opposite of what he is to everybody watching that's obvious but the reason he says that is not because he believes that of course it's because what iroh said is deeply emotionally threatening to zuko poor iroh he'll be all right though he'll be okay. in the dream obviously the avatar state is a threat to him hmm i wonder what that meant he killed zuko with it i don't know what to make of that but that's interesting i don't think we should be trying to bring on the avatar state do you think the general will be mad? You're the Avatar. Who knows better than you? Good. Listen to your heart. I know it's cliche, but it's it's cliche for a reason. Don't leave without me. Family sticks together. So Uncle Iroh is obviously going in the role of a guardian. I can only reach the Avatar state when I'm in genuine danger. I was afraid you'd say that. Oops. <laughs> but it's not going to be about him being in danger. It's about his friends being in danger. Attack! This is gonna get weird, but this is something I think about a lot. You can't trust people just because they want the same thing as you. Growing up, I used to always think somebody who wants the same outcome as me is my friend. Now, I think it's totally untrue. I think what matters way more is reasoning and motivation behind things. Because if you have an ally who's motivated by the wrong reasons, one day your goals may not be the same. And because they don't value integrity and honesty, they're gonna turn on you and your ally becomes an enemy. I'd much rather be around people who want different things from me, but whose character I can trust and whose motivations I believe to be pure. Those people can coexist with me even if we want different things. I think this guy is a good example. He's not somebody you want to ally yourself with because he'll turn on you as soon as it's convenient for him. This may seem kind of abstract, but I think this is super relevant for life. I see people doing this a lot along political boundaries because people think that people who agree with them politically are their friends. They may be your ally today, but as soon as you disagree with them, they'll be your enemy. 
and so you want to be really careful who you ally yourself with. I'd rather have good, virtuous friends who disagree with me politically than callous, calculating friends who are on the same side as me politically. Does that make sense? So I think this guy, he just exposed himself, and he's definitely not somebody you want in your corner. I believe we are about to get results. That's exactly it. You care only about the outcome and you forget the virtue. Those people are not friends. I'm not your enemy! And it's such a waste, right? Like, why are we fighting each other? to come. Uh-oh. Raise the anchors. We're taking the prisoners home. Oops. You fight your way out. Yes. Good. I'm glad. You lied to me. Nice parallel. Zuko is fighting his alleged ally, and Aang is fighting his alleged ally at the same time. So many parallels between the two characters. It's great. Maybe you can avoid me. But she can't. Now this is gonna do it. Ah! Oh, oh yeah, ground. I'm trying. I don't see glowing. Ah! What a jerk. There it goes. Watch him kill him. Yeah, he doesn't have control now. Nice. Let's go. It makes it look so easy. You know, father blames uncle for the loss at the North Pole, and he considers you a miserable failure for not finding the Avatar. Oh no. Why would he want you back home, except to lock you up where you can no longer embarrass him? Ouch. She's more powerful. Nice. Wow. Yeah, kicked her right in the face. It was just a trick to trigger the Avatar state. Good, at least it's not a total animal. That was his dream. It was a premonition of destruction. Yeah, they kind of had that coming, though. It's time you learned the Avatar's state is a defense mechanism designed to empower you with the skills and knowledge of all the past Avatars. If you are killed in the Avatar's state, the Avatar will cease to exist. It's a pretty glaring weakness. We just have to find out a way to control you when you're like that. You're out of your mind. Yeah. I guess we'll figure it out on the way to the Fire Nation. Thank you. Mm. Just when you think Zuko can't fall any further, he falls more. But then again, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you can start climbing out of it. Season 2 starting off strong. So we got the, the amazing introduction to the sister. Zuko and Aang both kind of going through a process of betrayal, although one much more severe than the other. And Aang kind of listening to himself, coming to his senses, which is good. And also we learned a lot about the Avatar State. So it's a great start to Season 2. I will see you for Season 2, Episode 2.